Hello, future VC. Are you wondering how to get into venture capital without experience? Are you thinking, Peter, where do I even start? Well, it comes down to three skills. And if you stay into the end, you're going to know what you can do today to get started. Plus, I will reveal my three secrets and I'll share with one of them with you right now. And that is, you only actually have to be good at two of these to be successful. <laughs> I'm Peter Harris. I've been working in venture now for over 14 years, made over 80 investments in great companies that you might have heard of like Spotify, Snapchat, Airbnb, as well as lots of other smaller ones that hopefully someday you will have heard of. Today, we're gonna to talk about what is venture capital and why you should even consider working in venture capital. And stick with me and I will share my own personal story of how I got into the world of being a venture capitalist. But let me tell you, I had no idea what I was doing when I started, but I'm here now, so there is hope for all of us. I have a bad feeling about this. But before I share my story, let's get into it. So first, what is a venture capitalist? A venture capitalist is somebody that is managing money from other investors they, they take some of that pool of money and they invest it in startups and they help those startups grow and develop. If that sounds like incredibly challenging to take an idea and go from that idea to Google or Facebook or Tesla or one of these huge companies that dominate their space, you're right, it is hard. But the flip side is, and this is why you might want to look into venture capital as a possible career, it can be incredibly lucrative if you can do it right. So for example, a $100,000 investment. So some of the early investors in Uber were able to take $100,000 and turn that into over a billion dollars. So if that's enough to convince you that maybe this might be a career field for you, let's talk about how do you get in without any experience? Because look, we all start from somewhere, right? And you gotta build that experience over time. One of the things that I tell people all the time when I get this question, is there are basically like three things to get a job in venture capital. And if you look at all the different VCs that are out there, the, the, the career track is not as, as well defined as you might expect. And when you talk to them, what you hear is, oh, I just kind of fell into it. The opportunity just kind of arose. Yo, know, I kind of was at the right place at the right time. Two of those things are true, right? Right place, right time. But what they also aren't mentioning is they were the right person. The right people have to know who you are so that when the right time comes along, you're the obvious choice. And the way that you become the obvious choice is not just being by being known, you also have to be the right person. And so you have to start building those relationships, but then they also have to trust that you're the right person. So great venture capitalists are really good at two of three things. Like I mentioned earlier, you only actually have to be good at two of the three. They have to be really good at fundraising, right? Because you're investing other people's money into companies. You have to be really good at deal sourcing. So going out and finding the right opportunities and not just finding them and saying, oh yeah, like that's a cool company. But deal sourcing actually takes it a step further. You, you have to be able to convince the entrepreneur to take your money because, you know, venture capital is very, and, and funding startups is kind of like dating. Like whoever's more attractive in the, the, the relationship is gonna have a little bit more power and you're gonna have to do a little more convincing. I love you. I know. And I'll tell you this, like the hottest deals, the most attractive deals have lots of VCs chasing after them. And so there is a skill in terms of like getting access to that deal. And then the last is being able to like pick the deal or do your due diligence, right? Because you can get access to really hot companies, uh, but even hot companies, can be really risky if you don't do your due diligence. And you know, I could give you example after example where investors have lost billions of dollars uh, on deals that were really hot, but they didn't do their diligence appropriately and, and ended up losing tons of money. So you gotta be good at two of those three things. And if you can be world-class at two, you can be a world-class venture capitalist. Here's the thing. If you don't know a ton of rich people, it's probably gonna be hard for you to get really good at fundraising. Cause that's like a sales skill. You're selling them on your ability to invest their money better than they can invest their own money. So we're not gonna spend a ton of time on that because I don't know about you, but when I started, I didn't know very many rich people. So where can you focus? Well, you can focus on building relationships with entrepreneurs and sourcing deals and you can focus on developing your own skill sets around doing due diligence. So let's talk about building relationships. 
I'm gonna approach this in two, two different ways. One, let's assume that you're early in your career. Maybe you're a student or you're recently out of undergrad and you, you're just new in the industry. Well, leverage the fact that you're young and inexperienced and eager to learn to reach out to people. Like you'll be shocked. If you're a student, you can play that student card and meet all kinds of interesting people if you're just willing to like get outside your comfort zone. So for example, when I was a student and even when I was new in my career, I went to a ton of events. And what was crazy is that typically I was one of very, very few college students or young professionals that would attend those events. And then I would just go and talk to people. And here's the thing that's really interesting about networking. If you approach networking from a perspective of like, what can you do for me? It's gonna be tough. But if you approach it from like, what can I do for you? Uh, you'll meet all kinds of interesting people and you'll be able to build those relationships over time. And you know, it's like karma. You put good into the world and good comes back to you. So I would go to these events, I would meet entrepreneurs, I'd hear about their business, and then I would try to help them figure out, you know, get connected to the right people to help them with whatever need it was. Maybe it was fundraising, so I'd connect them to VCs. If it was they needed to hire certain people, I'd connect them to those people. If it was they needed help around marketing, I'd find those people and connect them. And because I was connecting with other people, VCs and marketing people and uh, technical people and all kinds of people, right? It was like, okay, I could be this like interconnector um, and add value to all those relationships. Uh, and that was like a really easy way to go out and start building relationships with lots of people. And what happens is when you're out there and you're talking to entrepreneurs and you're trying to help them with their business, they see you as a value add kind of person. They want you on their team. And that's what ultimately gets you access to their deals, right? Building those relationships. The other thing is that if you're, you go to a venture capitalist and you say, hey, I know one of the hardest things that you're trying to do is find high quality deal flow. Well, let me be your eyes and ears out there and I will, I will screen these deals and send you good deal flow, right? And so over time, you can build up a little bit of a track record and a relationship with these VCs of, hey, here's an interesting deal that I found, entrepreneur. I built a relationship with him or her. I vetted the business so I know it's interesting. Do you want to take a look? And that kind of support and help to a VC can be super valuable and can prove like, hey, this person not only can source deals, get access to deals, but also knows how to diligence deals. Now, diving a little bit in deeper on how do you build out those skill sets around due diligence and deal picking, one, you should be learning from everybody. So one of the things I love about venture capital is that as an intellectually curious person, I love learning. And so I get the opportunity to learn from everybody and you should approach it the same way. Everybody's got something interesting that they can share about their career, their industry, whatever it might be. That will allow you to start thinking strategically about businesses. Another thing that I've seen people do that's been really successful is they become like an expert in a certain new area that's super hot. And then the last thing that I highly recommend, apply for internships. Do things that will get you real deal experience. So you can do that by doing, doing internships at venture funds if you're a student. Maybe you know somebody that's, that's a high net worth individual that's got a lot of money that wants to invest in these types of things. Go work with them and say, hey, I'll do all the work for free. I will help you uh, make these investments, right? That could be an easy way to start building a track record. The last thing you can do is actually invest, start investing your own money through equity crowdfunding sites like Republic and WeFunder and Seed Invest and a whole bunch more. And that can be a great way because you can invest for as little as $100 in some of these deals to so start building a track record and learning the ins and outs of venture capital. Now, when I started 14 years ago, I, like I said, I didn't have any experience. Um, I, at the time, I was in school. I was working on this startup uh, that ultimately failed. And a buddy of mine was like, hey, there's this really cool thing called University Growth Fund that you should, or University Venture Fund that you should check out. And so I did, and that was a student-run fund uh, based in Salt Lake City, Utah, that I joined as a student. What's interesting to me about that experience was, yeah, I got exposure to venture capital and, and got to work on some deals and so forth. But I think the thing that really allowed me to translate it from like a cool internship to a, like a career 
was diving in and going all in. I spent a ton of time, probably somewhere between 20 and 40 hours a week working at this fund, plus taking 18 credits, plus working two other jobs. Like I didn't sleep, but I just loved it. And because I put so much time and energy into it and made it like my thing, it opened up all these additional opportunities. One of which was when I graduated, I was offered a full-time position at that firm. I'll give you another example. A good friend of mine uh, lived up in Idaho. And at the time there was only really one venture fund in Idaho. He cold called them and was like, hey, I wanna be an intern for you. And they were like, nah, we don't really take interns. And he was like, please, I will work for free. I will do whatever, I will get your coffee. I, I you know, right? Like you tell me, I will do it. And they were like, fine, fine, just stop bothering us and we'll take you on for the summer, right? So he came on, but he didn't just like, you know, rest on his laurels and, and take it easy now that he had the internship. He dove in and went above and beyond as much as he could. But he was taking notes on calls, he was building financial models, he was finding ways to be super proactive. If he didn't learn, know something, he'd ask questions or he'd go on the internet and figure it out and then come back and add value. And what was interesting is, at the end of the internship, which they thought would just be like a month long thing, you know, pat, pat him on the head, he was adding so much value that they were like, we actually don't wanna lose you at this point. And they ended up making him a full-time offer. Here's the thing in venture, and we're gonna touch on this in future videos. Part of the reason why getting a job in venture is so hard is that these firms are really small. And so you have to convince the investors at the fund that you're gonna grow the pie more than you're gonna take from it. Hopefully that was helpful, I'm Peter Harris. Stay tuned for more videos on venture capital.